And I have a wonderful guest for you all tonight. And my special guest this evening is Gerald R. Clark. And Gerald Clark is a 1994 graduate of the University of California at San Diego, UCSD. Gerald holds an MSEE in electronic circuits and systems and is a BS and a BS in computer engineering, both from UCSD. Gerald is the author of several papers in the communications and electronics field and is well known for his work in the San Diego high technology industry, awarded several patents in the free space optical laser communications field while serving as vice president of engineering, LightPoint Communications Incorporated. Gerald's career involved companies like Laurel Telemetry and Instrumentation, where he led the final phase of the Global Star Telemetry and Command Modern modem, excuse me, designed for Qualcomm, used to command, monitor, and control 54 LEO Global Star Constellation satellites. While serving as VP Engineering at Turin Communications, Gerald and his small team of hardware and software engineers were credited with the digitizing American television, having demonstrated the first live HD TV ABC Monday Night Football game on an air transmission from New York to San Diego using Turnin Communications Incorporated, HDTV 18, 1080i720p MPEG-2 encoders. And during the years 1996 through 2002, working as a telecommunications executive, Gerald's business travels took him to various parts of the world, exposing him to a plethora of cultures, which acted as a catalyst for his research into mankind's earliest technologies and accomplishments, including the cultures of Mesopotamia and the surrounding areas of Turkey, Egypt, per Persia, and Iraq, eventually leading to the cuneiform inscribed tablets left by the Sumerians. Knowledge of the Anunnaki here on Earth, both in the ancient past, their present here and now, is being fully disclosed around the world. His hope is that this book will help the billions of primitive workers left to fend for themselves on a hostile planet to find hope that following the great destruction underway brought by the warring gods of light and dark, a promised peace in the new age of Aquarius is dawning, actually already upon us. <clears throat> Excuse me, Gerald has a new book, Seventh, Seventh Planet Mercury Rising, which I love that title available on his website as signed and also on Amazon.com. Let's not forget his other wonderful book, The Anunnaki of Nibiru. His website is www.geraldclark77.com. Please welcome Gerald R. Clark to the show this evening. Good evening. It's really great to be here with you, and I want to wish all your listeners a warm, warm welcome. Well, thank you very much. It's a pleasure and honor to have you on board with us tonight, and I can't wait to dive into your new book. And I have to say, I love the title, Seventh Planet, Mercury Rising. That's, that's just classic. I just love it. <laughs> <laughs> I have to ask you, it sounds like a sci-fi movie. It's really good. Uh, where did you get that title from? Oh, I'd, I'd love to tell you the story. So uh, it, turned, it, it actually came to me in pieces, and I won't make it too long. But uh, I was actually getting like this uh, weird set of synchronicities that started September 1st. 2013 after writing the Anunnaki of Nibiru and it happened for 12 days in a row and one of the things that came out of that strange experience was three quarters of the title for the book and it had a lot to do with the the substance mercury it kept showing up symbolically and uh, I got invited to go gold mining up in the Sierras and it turned out that mercury ended up being the forefront of the issue as the miners were being blamed for stirring up mercury in the in the riverbeds and poisoning the, the fish, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so it kept coming up. So one thing led to another. And in my research, I found in the Enuma Elish that the uh, Anunnaki had named the planets based on from the outside in. And in their telling of this story, this allegorical battle of these planets, that were vying for position in the solar system, which they were trapped in. They named uh, all the planets and gave them their position. And it turned out they called Earth the planet Key, K-I, and that its position was number seven. So I, hmm. I thought it would be interesting to, to tell the story of the Anunnaki from the seventh planet prison, <laughs> a, a primitive worker perspective, hmm. and also through the eyes of the one who was affiliated with that planet who shows up in that account and that was mercury hermes Ningshita. he has many many names but uh he was a uh, he was an epic figure in that enuma ilish and so i kind of adopted looking into some of his writings and used his perspective and my perspective to tell that story in the seventh planet mercury rising and That's one of the excellent. one of the one of the very key questions i i wanted to answer for people when they finally read the first book and got over the shock that perhaps an alien race had something to do with our genetic origins, if they got good with that finally, the next question that comes up with, for them is they start trying to piece together the dimensional hierarchy. Well, where do they fit in? How do they fit in with our concept of a creator or a creator of all? And so that also was a central focus of the second book, 
was to expose who the Anunnaki thought was quote unquote God and how they saw them, their race and our civilization in relationship to that creative force. 